Now let's talk about if you are sending messages, I want to highlight some very important do's and don'ts. So the first don't is don't make it all about you. I mentioned this one because I get messages every day from salespeople on LinkedIn and the messages are all about the prospect. And so I'm going to give you a fictitious email here. Hi, Michael. Thank you for connecting. I'm with Websites Redesigned for you. We're based in Austin and we're the leader in building websites for 23 years. We provide website design, digital marketing, pay-per-click. Are you looking to redesign your website? Let me know when you're available for a 20 to 30 minute meeting where we can discuss our services. I wanna highlight some things in this message. Now remember the don't that I was talking about was don't make the email all about you. And so this email is all about the salesperson. Look at what I've highlighted here. This is who they work for. This is where they're based. This is how many years they've been in service. This is how all the services they provide. Not only is the bulk of their message all about me, 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 but this person's trying to schedule a meeting where he or she can talk to me more about them. They want to schedule a meeting to discuss their services. So this is all about the salesperson. And my advice is don't make it all about you. This is the equivalent of going to lunch with a friend and all a friend does is talk about their own stuff and they don't ask you any questions about you or care about you. It's just a one-sided, self-absorbed conversation. That's what the equivalent of this is. And so if I go back to this slide, which you've seen many times talking about the smart sales system, we've been comparing product selling, which is what the majority of salespeople do, and then what the majority of salespeople on LinkedIn do. And then I'm trying to get you to be more consultative. Well, if someone's in product selling mode, they're gonna send that message that I just sent, and they're gonna be all about them, because that message basically follows this flow. This is who I work for, this is what I'm selling, do you need what I'm selling, I wanna schedule a meeting with you to try to sell to you. That's a product selling email message. And if you, what I would say instead of doing that is instead of making it all about you in your messages, make your message all about the prospect. And the easiest way to do that is to, you, if you use the consultative selling approach, you're gonna make it all about the prospect because you're gonna talk about improvements that they might see or be interested in. You're gonna talk about problem pain points they might have. You're gonna ask them questions. You're gonna share examples and whatnot. So this is gonna be a more all about them approach. I'm gonna show you some email templates that apply this and make it less all about you. Don't try to sound like a salesperson trying to sell something. I've said this a lot. This definitely applies. This applies more than ever to LinkedIn prospecting. We've talked about this in the past where you don't want to make your prospects increase guardedness by sounding like a salesperson. This is even more important on LinkedIn because especially when you become connections, like I said, when you become connections, you're almost sending a gesture like, let's collaborate, let's network. You're not asking them to invite you to be connected with them so that you can sell to them. You need to be cautious of not creating that impression. Uh, by the way, if I go back to this email, like I said, not only is this all about the seller, the salesperson, but this is very much, I'm a salesperson and I'm trying to sell something to you. This person is trying to sell website redesign. Instead of trying to sound like a salesperson, you can do small things to sound more like a business person, more like a consultant or an advisor. And if I go back here, the consultative selling approach will decrease how much you sound like a salesperson and will help you to sound more like an advisor or a consultant. Don't do the instant pitch. So what the instant pitch is, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but it happens to me almost every single day. A salesperson sends an invite to become connections. Then the prospect at some point accepts the invitation to connect. There shortly after, the salesperson sends an email and the email is a product selling email. So it's basically what I, I call this the instant pitch because it's definitely a pitch and it happens right after the prospect sends the, the invitation. So you may be able to picture that, maybe you've experienced that, but I want to show you just how bad this is by putting some words and examples to this. So let's go back to the very beginning. The salesperson sends an email to invite to connect and it might look something like this. Hi, hey, we have a lot of mutual connections, let's connect. Or, oh, you have an impressive profile, let's connect. Would love to have you in my network. Then step two is the prospect says, okay. Now, in theory, the, when you accept, there's actually not a place to say anything, but figuratively, when someone clicks accept, they're saying, okay, let's network, let's, let's connect, right? Then immediately after, 
you receive this email. And this is the same email that I showed with, with you in the previous examples from websites redesigned for you. This is the product selling all about me. I'm a salesperson trying to sell something email. And you receive this right after they say, oh, looks like we have a lot of mutual connections. Bam, now I'm gonna try to sell to you. This is the instant pitch. And I personally think this is horrible. There's a couple things that you should do instead of that. The minimum that you could do is have some sort of delay there. So if your prospect accepts the invitation to connect today, maybe wait a week, wait, wait two weeks, and then go back and send your product selling message. The other thing you can do is you can have a less pitchy message. So you know, maybe if you have the consultative selling message, maybe you could send it instantly because it's not as product selling-ish, that would be better. But even if you sell the consultative selling message, I think it's good to just kind of pause a little bit, let's let the dust kind of settle before you send your message. Don't sell the product. So if, so if I go back to this message here, this salesperson is clearly selling the product. They're asking, are you looking to redesign your website? Can we schedule a meeting where I can discuss our, my services to you? So this is selling the product. And we've talked about this before, which is don't sell the product, just simply try to start conversations because you're trying to take the prospect through these sales process steps. So if you're at the initial contact step, the next step is not to sell the product. So if you're reaching out for the first time on LinkedIn through a cold email, the next step is not for me to purchase you to rebuild my website, right? We're gonna have to talk. We're gonna have to get to know each other. You're gonna need to learn a little bit more about me. I'm gonna need to learn a little bit more about you. That happens in the conversation, happens in the meeting sell the meeting instead of selling the product. This will greatly improve your email messages. I talked about how small the window is on LinkedIn and I've talked about just the general concept of instant delete. You wanna send short messages. The longer your message is, the quicker your message will get deleted. Try to stay within two to three sentences. This is something I've observed in messages that I've received, which is often salespeople, really connections, will send a message that that if I were to answer what they're asking, I would have to work. Here are some examples of questions that put, that put me to work, right? What do you do? What are you working on? What's your biggest challenge? These are very broad, very open questions. They're not horrible questions to ask, but think about sending this to someone in an email message, right? Let's look at it this way. Think about how long it takes to type, what do you do? I mean, it takes between five to 10 seconds to type out that question. Now think about how long it would take me to answer that question. Not only would I have to stop there and think and do, type out some sort of message, so what you're doing is you're trying to sell something and or at least build a relationship and the, the person that you're reaching out to is not yet interested or expressing interest at this point. So you're the one that's interested and what you're doing is you're spending it, when you ask a question like this, you're spending a minimal amount of time and you're asking the other person to invest all this time in order for the conversation and discussions to get going. So what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna flip that. You're the one that's trying to earn their attention, their time, their relationship. So you should be the one investing time and you need to minimize, at least at the, in the very beginning, how much time they need to respond. Not only is that the more polite thing to do, but it's, if you're trying to get a response and get engaged, it's the more logical thing to do because you want their response to be as easy as possible. So the, the do here would be to send a message or a question that's more specific and does not put the prospect to work. This happens to me all the time. Someone sends me an invitation to connect, I accept, but then what happens is I notice I start getting their email marketing emails in my uh, inbox. So they get my Gmail email address and then what I notice is in my promotions tab in Gmail, I'll start getting their company emails. And what happens here is they're basically adding me to their email drip, their email autoresponder, their email marketing software without my consent or without me opting in. This is just, it's pretty spammy and you're gonna end up with an email list that's really not a great list of leads. Uh, I, don't, I personally don't think it's optimum. If, if you have no other option uh, in terms of building your email list, I guess go for this. But if you can, what I would recommend is that you engage with them in some sort of way first, whatever that is, maybe through messages, you talk to them, you get a meeting with them, and then you add them to your email marketing 
or find a different way to build up your email marketing list through your maybe through your website or through ads or through some sort of call to action on your website opt-in form but I think this is a bit pretty bad practice and it probably will take you in a direction of getting marked as spam uh, and lead to minimal results. Here's a big one and this applies to, to LinkedIn messages as well as traditional email but don't question if someone has seen your your past emails. When someone doesn't reply don't send a follow-up email saying, hey, did you see my last email? Did you get a chance to read my last email? Never heard back from you. I, don't, I really don't know what the logic is in saying that. I think it breaks rapport. It doesn't really create a good vibe. I guess my assumption would be that salespeople send that because they don't have anything else to send in their follow-up email. So what I would say to you is it, you have a series of emails where you have something else to send and in your email number two, so the, here, the do here is just send your next message. Don't mention the message and ask where they're at on that. So those are some do's and don'ts.